YXBA is back, and I'm ready to mash some more buttons. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a leak from a new site, Semi-Accurate, which states that Nintendo has made a deal with NVIDIA to have Tegra chips power their next generation handheld. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the article if you want to read it in more detail. On the actual website itself, it requires a paid login subscription. So I'm going to link to a different site which has included all of the information that came out of that article. Right now, there's no way to know for sure if this is true or not, but I wanted to focus this video on how powerful this handheld might actually be if this rumor is true. And more importantly, will it beat the PlayStation Vita? Now, NVIDIA has been making versions of the Tegra chip for a long time now, but I want to focus a little bit more on the chips which actually are most likely to be used by a company like Nintendo, which is dedicated to using industry-leading chips. So, based on my research, this is the relative power levels of each of the Tegra chips. The Tegra 1 would be far too weak to be considered. In fact, it would be a backward step a little bit in terms of power compared with the current 3DS. So, you know, you can pretty much just cross this one off. They ain't gonna be using a Tegra 1. The Tegra 2 is give or take a spec or two on par with the 3DS in terms of power. So again, they're not going to be coming out with a brand new console to replace the 3DS that is only on par with the 3DS. Tegra 3 was made famous by its inclusion in the ill-fated Ouya Android console. Roughly, the GPU power in the Tegra 3 was somewhere between the 3DS and the PlayStation Vita. And again, I just don't see Nintendo using such old technology. They're going to want to use something that actually supports uh, the modern uh, APIs like Vulkan, which we have talked about uh, considerably, and just is more more modern than this, something that would be actually capable of running console games at a lower resolution on the handheld. So the Tegra 4 is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. I still think it's pretty unlikely that it's going to be only using the Tegra 4. I think it'll be higher than that. The Tegra 4 was used to power the NVIDIA Shield handheld and it's capable of running games like Half-Life and Portal and is definitely a step up over the PlayStation Vita in terms of overall graphical prowess. I see this being probably the lowest possibility that Nintendo would use if they do go with a Tegra GPU out of the hypothetical uh, chips that I could see them actually implementing. If you take a look at a lot of games running on the Shield handheld, it doesn't actually give you that great of an insight into how powerful the thing is because you're just talking about ported Android games that aren't well optimized and don't really show it off that well. The Tegra K1 is a sexy, sexy chip and is based on NVIDIA's Kepler technology and when it launched on the Shield tablet made it the most powerful tablet at that time, beating out the iPad, which is actually no small feat at all. It would absolutely smoke the PlayStation Vita and even rival the Xbox 360 and PS3. To me, this is the most likely Tegra chip to be included in the NX handheld due to its relative low cost and still highly respectable performance. In fact, this chip supports a wide variety of APIs, including Vulkan, which has been heavily rumored to, to be something that Nintendo wants to support in their console, and this would allow them to support it on their handheld as well, which is going to make it all the more easy to have the same games running on both platforms. The Tegra X1 is very, very impressive and is used in NVIDIA's Shield console. This version of the chip is able to make the Shield console in the same ballpark as the Xbox One 
and easily beats the Wii U in terms of power. It would make it incredibly easy to get Wii U games ported over to the handheld, and in fact, you could probably even run the latest uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games if the handheld resolution was set to 540p. There would probably be some downgrades here or there other than resolution, but I think it would be definitely within the realm of possibility. Nintendo would truly be able to have all games on their handheld and console if this chip was used. It has yet to make an appearance in a handheld and would likely be underclocked in such a scenario, so it's hard to tell exactly how powerful the handheld would be if it is using a Tegra X1. Now, if you want to get really, really excited about something that just ain't gonna happen, we can talk about the Tegra Parker. It isn't even out yet and not a lot is known about it, other than that it's based on NVIDIA's Pascal architecture. It would likely surpass the PS4 in terms of processing power and to me it's just far too high-end to be considered for Nintendo's next handheld. And remember, we have to take all of this with a huge grain of salt. Remember, it had been strongly rumored that the 3DS would use NVIDIA chips, but Nintendo ultimately decided to go in a completely different direction. However, this time around, I think the odds are more likely because NVIDIA is, is likely to be pretty aggressive in giving Nintendo a good price after not even being brought to the table on PS4 and Xbox One negotiations. And I could see Nintendo going back to their roots a little bit if they end up using a Tegra chip in their handheld and actually having a little sticker on the handheld itself or on the box of the handheld and really promoting the usage of NVIDIA, which ends up being free advertising for them, uh, which makes them more likely to give a better price on the chips. A Tegra-based Nintendo handheld would easily beat the PlayStation Vita. It would absolutely destroy the Vita in terms of specs. Even a three-year-old NVIDIA handheld, which currently retails for $199.99, absolutely teabags the PlayStation Vita. So I'm really excited as a handheld fan about this rumor, but like I said, there's no way to know for sure until Nintendo starts to announce it or if some developers who have got their hands on the dev kits for it start speaking very openly about it. So yeah, um, I'm excited about this and it was good to get some good news after Emily Rogers uh, kind of rained on our parade a little bit with the NX and I hope to talk a little bit more about her blog post uh, in a future video. This has been Colin Unger reminding you to keep your thumbs glued to YXBA and always remember to select start. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe.